Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Code With Me video. Today we're going to build a rock, paper, scissors game in Python and we're going to use object-oriented programming. Now, if you're new to the channel, I just want to give you a heads up. This is not exactly a tutorial. I tend to make these videos where I build something on the spot and I share my thought process and my struggles with you guys. I usually do these videos not just to challenge myself but also to kind of motivate and inspire you guys to build something cool in your free time so that you can learn something along the way as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Rock, Paper, Scissors is a bit more of a simple game, at least compared to some of the other games I've done on my channel, but that's also why I like it. Despite being simple, this game already gives you an opportunity to work with some of the fundamentals, such as classes and enums, and also how to handle user input. I have to say that when I'm coding, my brain does not think in object-oriented programming. My brain thinks in spaghetti code. So if you struggle to come up with useful classes and with object-oriented design, don't worry, because honestly same and I do this for a living. So the rock paper scissors game is basically just a game where two players pick a shape and then they go against each other and there are rules on which shape wins against which shape. In terms of the structure of the code the way I'm thinking of setting it up is by creating three classes. So I want to have a game class where I'm going to have the logic of the beginning of the match and I'm going to finish the match once they have played three times. I'm going to have a class for the player, so the player which is us, that reads in the user input. I'm going to have another class for the computer, which will pick a shape at random. So let's get started. I'm going to create a main file. And I'm going to open this project in VS Code. Let me create an enum class for the different shapes we have. I'm going to create a class for my player a class for my computer and a class for my game. I probably want to keep score of the human player and the computer within each of those classes. So I'm gonna add a variable for the score as well. And the score starts at zero. Now I'll do the same for the computer. Why is it complaining about this? This is not the fun. Oh! You know, I'm so used to writing Java that I don't know how to write Python anymore. <laughs> Even though at some point Python was my strongest language. Okay, now my game class. In my game class, I want to orchestrate the flow of the game. So I know that every game will have three matches. Is that the right way to say it? Or, or every match will have three plays. Let's call them rounds, maybe. Max number of rounds will be three. And I'm going to create a variable to keep track of which round we're at. And it will start at zero. Let's start by defining the computer. I think this is probably the easiest. The computer will pick one of the shapes at random and it will use that as his shape of choice in the match. So I'll probably create a method. I'll probably create a function called choose. So that the computer can choose one of the shapes at random. I should probably give it an array of options. Viable op options for shapes. Shape dot rock. Shape dot paper. And shape dot scissors. Okay. How do I do this again? Need to import the package up there. VS Code did it for me. Oops, there I go again. Coding in Java. Shape of choice. Let's see if this is working. Print shape of choice. Okay, I'm gonna run the code to see if this is indeed picking one of the options randomly. And in order to do that, I'm going to create a player and a computer variables in my game class. I'll define a function play. And in this function, I'm going to call self. Oops, I need to pass this in there. 
self.computer.choose. I just copied this from the internet. If name equals main, let's create a new instance of the game class and then call play. Let's see. Ah, oh, interesting. I didn't know I had to import this. Let's try it again. Okay, cool. Okay, it seems to be picking one of the shapes at random, so this is working. Now let's focus on the player. For the player, we need to read in the user input. I'm going to create a variable which has a list of options. I can probably refactor this later on. Shape of paper. And I'm going to create a choice class, sorry, a choice function so that I can write the logic of reading in the user input here. There is a function in Python where we can easily read in user input. Please enter your choice. So here's my input. Let's call it user input. If user input not in my options of shapes, I want to say that it's an invalid option. I should maybe show the options to the user as well. I'll return the user input once I have it. While I don't, I keep showing the same prompt. Please try again. This is an invalid option. However, I need to wrap all of this. I need to wrap all of this in a loop so that it keeps asking. Actually, let me change this. Let me do it differently. Um, it was... Okay, now, now it is working. I'll write that I need to call it here self dot um, player dot. Did I call it choice? Oh, wanted to call it choose. Just rename the function there because I had named it wrong. Since we're coding today, I thought I would show you guys a really cool extension, which I discovered recently when I was looking into API testing. The tool is called Echo API, and it's a lightweight VS Code extension, which makes it really easy to test and debug APIs. It works entirely offline, and you don't need to register online in order to get started. And it also supports Postman scripts. If you are used to Postman or a Thunder client, and you will find the transition really easy and seamless. Something which, in my opinion, makes them stand apart is that they automatically generate really good API documentation, and they also have an option to run everything locally on your machine, so you keep your data private and you don't share anything with any third parties. Echo API for VS Code is the ultimate alternative to Thunder Client. It offers everything you need completely free of charge. Echo API ensures that all the features are available to every user at no cost, and they commit to keeping it that way forever. So you can enjoy a fully featured API development experience without having to worry about hidden fees or paywalls. I think that Echo API is a really fantastic extension, whether you're an indie developer or a freelancer, or even if you work as part of a larger team. So if you are curious to try it, you can download the free extension on VS Code, and then you can check the documentation on equiapi.com. I think it is a really great tool, and I think you will like it too if you have to work with APIs. Make sure to check it out using the link in bio, and now back to the video. Oh weird, this is not asking me for the input as I expected. Why is the code not coding? The code is up. Ah! Now it worked. Wait, but this is really weird. Okay, rock. Invalid option. I'll write because I'm passing in an object from my enum shape and not the actual string. As we can see from what gets printed out here into the terminal, I'm actually getting the whole object from my enum and not the string. So when it tries to match it, it doesn't have a direct match. So I actually need to probably get the name here in my options please enter your choice my choice is rock oh still invalid so it was trying to match an uppercase string with a lowercase string and that's why it wasn't working but 
now let's try to code up the logic behind the game. So we want to compare the choice from each of the players and then we want to determine who wins based on the rules. And the rules are that rock wins against scissors, paper wins against rock, and scissors wins against paper. First of all, I only want to play while my number of rounds is less than the maximum number of rounds allowed, which is three. Now I have the computer choice and the player choice and I want to compare them and I want to adjust the score accordingly. So maybe I'll create a, a function to adjust the score based on the computer's choice and the player's choice. So rock wins over scissors, paper wins over rock, and scissors wins over paper. If the player and the computer pick the same object, then this round doesn't count. So let's address that edge case. Now we need to write some code to address all the possible scenarios of when one of the players would win and when the other player would win. So if my number is more, and my is this. I want to win as well. So if my number is more, and my number is this, then my number is this. I think this is what I'm going to do. If it's none of these options, then I know that the player has won, and I can increase the scarf of the player. And I also need to increase the rounds here, because this means that we have played another round. Unless they pick the same thing, in that case we don't increase the rounds because it's an invalid round and they will play again. Actually, no, let's not see anything. I forgot to do something. I forgot to actually call this function. So, I just score computer. Do I need to send in the self? I guess. Do I not? I don't know. Oh, right. So bad with Python syntax. Let's see if our rounds are being increased after calling this. And let's have a look at the scores as well. Mm, rock. Wait, I want to see what the other guy picked. Mm. Oh, he has scissors. Okay, now I found a hack to really win this game all the time. Uh, rock. One, one, zero. So one for the round, one for the player, and zero for the computer. Okay. Now, paper. He picked paper, so I'm gonna pay, pick scissors. Two, two. Amazing. Now he picked paper again. I'm gonna pick rock. Three, one. And the game ended. Seems to be working. Obviously, I need to delete this print statement, otherwise, we can see what the computer chooses ahead of time and we can simplify this here by simply returning the random output. Now I need to display the scores and probably find like display the winner of the match as well. So if here I should give them names actually I should call the computer well, I guess computer, AI, <laughs> to make it sound fancy, like every single company nowadays uses AI, so I think it's fair for me to say that my AI won, even though my AI is really just a random choice function. Computer.name? No, I'm kidding. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm just going to name it computer, not AI. And the player, I'm going to name him... Well, player, I guess. So if the score of the computer is higher than the score of the player, then the computer won. Otherwise, the player won. Adjust score. After adjusting the score, I want to... Actually, no. I only want to determine the winner after the run is finished. Mm, I think there's a way to simplify this. This is why everyone loves Python, because instead of writing these four lines of code, you can simply 
right. The computer's name, if the score of the computer is higher than the score of the player, otherwise return the player's name. Slightly after every round, I want to see the scores. Maybe I'll create a method to print them out. Display scores. After every round, I want to check what the score is like. So if I choose first and the computer chooses after me, and everyone prints out their pick. Maybe just choice because who's got time to write all of that? It's giving bug. Okay, let's try it now. Paper. User chose paper, computer chose paper. Oh, okay. Um, rock. User chose rock, computer chose paper, computer won this one. Sucker. I'll choose rock again, and I won. And I'm going to choose rock again. And I win. Slay. Now I want to have something that tells me who the winner is at the end. One. Let's see if this works. Rock. Rock. Player score one, computer score zero. I'll play rock again. We play the same rock, paper. Mm. Oh my god! Player one. I think that's it. I think this is our game. There are a few improvements we could do. We could create a player, like a generic player class and have the computer and the human player inherit from this class because this way you can kind of define a structure and the methods which you want all players to utilize. For example, the score attributes and the choose function, those should be common among all players. It's a nice game to practice writing some classes and thinking about code in terms of classes, but I hope that this was helpful to kind of give you an idea on how this could be done potentially. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe because it really supports my channel. And please let me know what other coding videos you want to see from me so that I can prioritize it and make sure that I'm creating projects and videos that you guys enjoy. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Thank you for the support and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.